Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez and today's video is just going to be a quick follow-up to a video that I made a couple months ago explaining why I left the Sony Ambassador program. In that video that I had made, I did say that I didn't want to use Sony products anymore and that I was going to switch to Canon. I said that at the end of the video, but it's been a couple months since I've made that video and I've had a lot more time to kind of think about the gear that I want to use and what I want to use in the future. So I wanted to make this video to explain why I'm still gonna be continuing to use different Sony products. I will say that I did make that video with a lot more fresh experience, negative experience with Sony. And after some time, I thought more about what would make sense for me to use in terms of the gear. So that's why I wanted to make this follow-up. Before I continue, I did want to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for people who love to learn, want to explore their creativity, and want to learn new skills. You can invest in yourself and your personal growth with Skillshare. If there's a specific skill that you're trying to learn, Skillshare is the perfect place to start because they have classes on pretty much everything, not just photography, off-camera flash, business, productivity, but so much more that you guys just need to go to Skillshare and check out the classes yourself. There's also so many benefits to joining Skillshare, including the fact that it's ad-free, so you can always stay in the zone while you're trying to learn. They launch new premium classes every single week, so there's always something new to discover. And they also offer subtitles in all their classes, including Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. One class that I was looking into recently is called The Ultimate Self-Care Playbook, Discover and Nurture Your Centered Self by Jonathan Van Ness. I wanted to take this class because I take self-care and mental health very seriously and wanted to see if there's anything I could learn from this class. One thing that I did learn from the class is whenever you're trying to learn new experiences, it can be seen as very scary and you might have a lot of anxiety trying to learn those new experiences, but it's best to just do your best to rewire your brain to see the benefits and the pros of those new experiences rather than freaking out. And I know it's easier said than done, but it's honestly good to just put a lot of effort to try to rewire your brain. And I thought that was very helpful from this class. If you guys are interested in trying Skillshare out, be sure to use my link in the description area below because the first thousand of you to use that link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. When you guys support the people that support my channel, it allows me to keep making free content for you guys. So definitely check out Skillshare. Probably the biggest reason why I'm still using Sony cameras right now is because of one lens. And I know that may seem silly to some of you, but it's my most favorite lens of all time, which is the Sigma R35 f1.2. That lens is easily my most favorite lens because it allows me to get a lot of the scene if I want to by taking a step back, or if I just want a picture of the subject and a blurry background, then I can get a little bit closer to that subject and blur the heck out of the background. That lens has great colors, great image quality, has a little bit of vignetting that I actually do like, and it is a bit expensive, but I was able to get mine at a good deal. So it was a little, you know, a little bit easier to get. But that lens is amazing and the fact that it's only available to Sony's E mount and I think maybe Leica's mount and not available to the Canon RF mount makes me want to stick with using some Sony cameras like my Sony a7R 2 for example. My a7R 3 did take a fall and doesn't work anymore so that's why I've been using my Sony a7R 2 lately and even though I did retire that camera back in maybe 2017 or 18 when the a7R 3 came out it's been working amazing. Even though the battery does suck a little bit, it still produces great images and I'll be sharing some of those images soon on my Instagram and on Facebook. By wanting to continue to use that lens, it allowed me to rediscover my love for the a7R 2 Even though it is an older camera, it still works amazing. And it's kind of, kind of a pro and a con because it made me not work so fast to repair my a7R 3 I still have that, I still need to send it but I have the a7R 2 right now and it works great. So it's like, why should I repair my a7R 3 But I definitely should do that very soon. Right now, Canon doesn't have an equivalent 35 f1.2 lens. They have an f1.4 and other third-party f1.4 lenses, but the optics of that Sigma R35 f1.2 is just so great that something would have to kind of compare optically to that lens for me to just use and buy that lens and use the Canon system. Like I have the Canon RP, for example, but because of no 35 f1.2 that works amazing, it's just like, why don't I just use the 35 f1.2 that I have already? And I do know that when that 35 f1.2 by Canon comes out, it's gonna cost an arm and a leg. And it might be, it might be a lens that I just rent out, but I would have to see how it works optically to see if it's worth staying and sticking with the Canon system. The second reason why I'm still using Sony cameras is because I would be limiting myself from certain lenses that are only available to Sony, at least to my knowledge. There's the Tamron 35 to 150 f2 to f2.8, 
lens, for example, I actually own that lens and it was pricey as well. So if I were to just cut off Sony entirely just because I had a bad experience with the company, then I wouldn't be able to use that lens and other lenses that I have like the Viltrox 85 1.8 and other lenses that I have that are only available to Sony's E-mount. Tamron has been doing a great job at producing great lenses that may seem a little bit weird in terms of the focal length, but results in a smaller lens that still works great optically, like the 28 to 75, for example. So I don't want to just cut off Sony and prohibit myself from using those lenses. So that's why I'm still using Sony cameras. Another reason why I'm still using my Sony cameras is because I want to do more screen recordings for you guys and show you exactly what my camera is seeing as I'm taking the pictures and the device that I'm using, which is the Axoon Cinei. For some reason, it doesn't work well with my Canon RP and other Canon cameras. I use the R5 as well. Whenever I was trying to record the back of the screen, it would show me a black screen on the back of the camera, but it would show the feed on the phone, which is where it gets recorded to. And that doesn't work really great. It forces me to use my phone attached directly to the back of the camera in order to see what I'm seeing or my camera scene. And whenever I would use my Sony products with the same device, I could see in the viewfinder, I think, as well as what's on the back of the screen and also have that feed also on my phone. So it just makes it easier to screen record with the Sony cameras. And if I were to not use any Sony cameras, then it'd be more difficult for me to produce those screen recordings for you guys. Yet another reason why I'm still using my Sony gear is because I actually have a ton of different Sony gear that I've accumulated over the years and I could replace them or sell them and replace them with Canon equivalent gear. But for one, that's going to be a hassle. I don't really like selling my gear to begin with. I always feel like I'm getting a huge loss out of the deal. And also I have a lot of ND filters that work really great that work only with Sony cameras. So the fact that I would have to just go through the hassle to sell all my stuff and not be able to use those ND filters, it just really sucks. So that's another reason. Some of you guys were asking if I were selling the different gear that I have, but there's a lot of gear that I've given away to my family members and other gear that I do have is kind of in dedicated positions in my content creation, like this Sony a7 III with the Sigma 16 f1.4. That's my dedicated camera for in this office where I record videos for you guys. And that one's just permanently here. It's not going anywhere. It doesn't go out into the field. So yeah, there's reasons why I still use these Sony cameras because it'd be a hassle and I can't use certain ND filters. And I just like them for exactly the positions that they're in. The very last reason why I'm still going to be using Sony cameras and Sony gear in the future is because I never want to limit myself in terms of certain tech that might exist in different camera brands. And having been a Sony ambassador for about five years, whenever I would see another company have a great feature and I wanted to try that feature, I couldn't. I could only use Sony cameras. So I, I experienced that limitation of sticking to just one camera brand in the opposite sense not wanting to use a certain camera brand is also going to limit myself. I don't want to limit myself from great tech out there. So that's why I'm going to continue to use Sony, especially if there's some great features that might come in the future with that brand. One great feature that could come from Sony or another camera brand is a global shutter. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's going to be something that's really important to off camera flash because if you didn't know what that is and from my limited understanding, it's a feature that would allow you to use all the light output from your lighting with any shutter speed, including high shutter speeds like 1 8,000th of a second. Currently, if you were to use a high shutter speed, anything past about 1 200th to 1 250th of a second, you do experience a huge loss in output with your lighting. And to get around that power loss, I've been using ND filters for the past couple of years. But both high speed sync with that power loss and ND filters with it running the risk of color cast or lower quality sharpness or loss in, loss in sharpness is what I'm trying to say. You run a risk with both of those different things. But with global shutter, from my understanding, there's pretty much no risk because you're using all the output from your flash and your camera is just able to just keep up with that flash. And you don't run the risk of lower quality images with a bad ND filter or that power loss with high speed sync. So that's a feature I definitely do want to try out. And if Sony comes out with that feature, then I'm definitely going to try that feature out with Sony. So that's pretty much the reasons why I'm still going to be using Sony cameras going forward. 
Again, like I said in the beginning of this video, when I made that video a couple months ago back in March, I was a bit heated and I thought I was fine in that video, but I've had a couple more months to kind of just cool down and think more clearly. And going forward, I don't want to ever limit myself in terms of a camera brand, not using one or using just one. So that's why I'm gonna keep an open mind with the gear that I'm using and why I, if another camera brand comes out with a great feature or great lens, I, and I could afford to try that out, then I'm gonna do that. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I explained a bit of my mindset going forward. If you have any questions about anything at all, let me know in the comment section below and I'll get back to you guys as soon as possible. But take care guys and I'll see you in the next video.